bit of Googling, I have to say. Catch him and possibly his black and white cat today on Classic FM from 4. Also, Weekend Wisdom from Will Watts. Apparently had the title written into Morse code. In Good morning everyone, it is Sunday and I thought I'd vlog today just to share a cosy day at home, I don't have any plans in particular and I'm just going to do some nice things today, I don't know what I'm going to do today but I'm just going to film it and I often really enjoy filming my days like this because it gets me up doing nice things because otherwise maybe I'd be a bit lazy and might not get much done but um I want to have a lovely, lovely day. I'm going to just quickly do my skincare because I thought I'd just pick up the camera first thing so I could get on with my day. So <laughs> I'm back in the bathroom showing you my skincare routine, which I feel like I just do it all the time. I'm sorry if that's boring for you. The Ren cleanser is being used still. I do like this. I don't love how runny it is. And when their jelly cleanser goes back in stock, I will buy it. How are you all doing? Let me know in the comments down below how you're all doing. I've not been doing great. I mentioned that in my turning 32 video. So it's been a bit of a struggle for me. I took a break off of YouTube for the week. Last week I didn't post anything, which is fine. We're gonna get there. I am still using this lovely rose water. There's honestly nothing that feels better. I love the smell of it, I love the feel of it, I love everything about it. I'd like your advice on something though. I've got these AHAs from Paula's Choice and Ren, and well, BHA and AHA. I'm using retinol with uh, Skin and Me, which is tretinoin, and can I use these? I feel like I get mixed information online. Some people say, yes, you can, just do it in the morning. And then some people say, no, you can't, you need to alternate days. But Skin and Me is the sort of thing you use every day. So let me know, because I don't want to put these to waste. I, I think that it's okay to use them in the morning, as long as your skin is feeling like, you know, not overly dry or exfoliated. And as long as you put SPF on, that's the information I've received. Probably should have put the rose water on after this. Oh well, um, but I'm going to use it. <laughs> I think you can kind of tell if your skin is feeling a bit dry and over exfoliated which mine isn't because I have oily skin. So we really have that issue. If I'm doing this all wrong, please let me know. I just really love this product because I feel like it really helps the texture of my skin. Moisturizer, lovely Galane moisturizer. I love this. I might buy this in the full size. They sent it to me, but it just smells lovely and feels lovely absorbs really well and then we've got our beauty of Joseon SPF bare minerals um complexion rescue natural matte tinted moisturizer this is new from them today I would quite like to bake something not sure what yet basically I'm going to bake whatever I have ingredients for because I haven't been shopping I'm kind of on that day where I need to go shopping tomorrow so dinner is definitely going to be whatever I have so is lunch in the cupboards and the fridge just using using it up and I feel like I could probably make a cake you know I was thinking maybe I could make I do have a lemon olive oil mm. yeah I need to have a little look but I feel like there's definitely a cake I could make because I've got plenty of flour maybe I could make my lemon cake the Ilia concealer that I got recently I love this it's a really nice concealer I need to spot conceal because I think basically what's happening is I've been using too much um, oil in the evening. I was using a Bramley oil, which is lovely, but I think I was putting way too much on and it's made me break out because that's the only change to my routine. Highly recommend if you are going through a bit of a, a struggle right now to set yourself the intention of every day getting ready. I know it sounds so novel and so small, but I think especially today, so many of us are working from home and unfortunately our lives have become so isolated because of the world we live in, which I think is really sad. And I think a lot of our mental health struggles are due to the world that we live in. 
the fact that we don't have communities anymore and the fact that we don't we just all live such individualized lives in our own homes every day doing our own thing and I just don't think that's how humans are meant to live so if you feel like you're struggling get ready you don't have to put makeup on if you're not a makeup person you could just wash your face and put moisturizer on put clothes on that make you feel happy and that can basically fit any any person if you're someone who loves to get dressed up and put makeup on then do that because it brings me motivation it's like a physical it's, I guess it's starting your day with a physical act that you have an intention to do something that day or to see people or to go outside um whereas if I just stay in my pajamas if that's a day where I'm feeling like 100% on top of the world then staying in my pajamas is probably a great idea because I don't need that extra motivation but if I am struggling it is actually really difficult isn't it to clean your teeth and um wash your face and put skincare on and I'm, I'm not trying to trivialize those things because that's like a symptom of feeling low so just make it like a, a something in your toolkit essentially this is the rms beauty lip to cheek in demure um yeah it's something in my toolkit that i've learned over the years that don't don't compromise on that just make it a habit that when you feel that way you have to get up and you have to get dressed and you have to keep going and if you do it enough it becomes a habit that you know when you feel that way that you just have to get up and you just have to put do your skincare or you just have to put your makeup on and it for me it depends on the day so some days all I can manage is to put like sweats on and wash my face um and then other days I am feeling it more and I'm like okay yeah I can I can put nice clothes on I can put blusher on so yeah, that's, I think it seems a simple bit of advice, but maybe someone needs to hear it right now. And so watching me might make you do it. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Brows. This is nearly finished. Um, I'm unsure if I'd repurchase this. I really like it because it adds a tint to my eyebrows and it doesn't look like I've got anything on my eyebrows. But I feel like I really want a brow gel that makes my eyebrows kind of like go up more. This kind of just fills them in. So let me know your favourite. I did have the Refi one, which I liked but because my eyebrows are so dark. It had like a white tint to it. And I found it just, yeah, made my eyebrows look like they were white. It's just basically, the product was just too heavy. It's more of a, if you like, a very done look. No, I actually, I do really like this product. I do. It's just I get this issue, it goes all over my face. I'm slating on it when it literally does what I want it to do. I don't know why I'm slating it. I'm saying like, oh, I'm not sure if I'd rebuy it when it does fill my eyebrows in very naturally without me having to put any effort in. <laughs> See, look how much better they look now. Amy Tubing Mascara, which changed my life. I think this is in a brown colour. This mascara is insane a few quick swipes and look at that beautiful mascara and then my typology tinted balm in dusty pink oh i forgot um blusher no i forgot powder my powder's in my handbag all right makeup is on Yesterday I did my hair up in a way that I thought was really nice, so I'm going to show you. Oh, it's getting hot. I think maybe I saw a version of this on TikTok. Which, if you are on TikTok and you don't follow me already, I'll link it below. So I take a couple front pieces down, which you don't have to do, for the bun. My hair is needing to be washed this evening. Pull it back. Then on the last turn, create just a really small loop like that. So you go just a tiny bit through and then move all this hair around to the front. I feel like this is something I used to do. And then you can use those pieces to make a messy bun. Just take these pieces and just clip them. And I bet you now I'm gonna do this, it's not gonna work. Cause last time I did this, it worked so well. And I was like, oh wow, that was easy.
And then these two front pieces. And then this is the back, which I always find really hard for me to show you because my hair's so dark. I'm at home, so who cares? But there you go, there's a hairstyle that if you have wavy curly hair, I think would look really good. If you have straight hair, let me know. I feel like if you had straight hair, it'd still look good, but it would look more 90s, because you know when they would, I feel like this is what we did in the 90s, when I, well, noughties probably, you put your hair up in a messy bun and leave straight pieces. So you probably have those kind of straight pieces sticking out. So maybe it is more of a universal hair. And if you have really curly hair, um, obviously you have to have long hair to do this, but if you have really curly hair, then I feel like that would look really cute and you'd probably just have like a little poofy, cute bun. So I feel so much better now. I feel like I'm ready to tackle the day. I'm gonna get dressed now. Earrings. I really want some really big gold hoops. I got these silver ones just in a market in Port Levin in the shipyard market. And there's a jewellery stall in there. And I got these earrings and some rings from them. My rings are downstairs though, I'll put them on in a second. Got my watch on. This necklace is Alex Monroe and it's a little swallow. I got this for my birthday. It's very, very cute from Alex. The dress is Naked Generation. These are kind of like, these are kind of the dresses I just wear around the house all the time because they're so comfortable, but I do feel like I've put something nice on. They're quite summery, but I don't know, I just, I really love floating. I've said this before in a video. I just love floating around the house in a hippie, you know, floaty dress like this. And I have it in this terracotta and white for that reason, um, because it feels like I'm wearing a nightie, to be honest. Are these called moo-moos? Is that what they're called? If there's anything to be said about style, it's wear what makes you happy and makes you feel comfortable. And this does exactly that, so I'm gonna keep on wearing it. And then I very kindly got sent this new um, perfume from Floral Street called Wild Vanilla Orchid. I love it. Floral Street is an amazing perfume company. It's vegan, cruelty-free, and they really care about the environment. So highly recommend, and their scents are great. I really love, I think it's called Wild Peony as well. That's another fave, so delicious. It's, it's very like, oh, it just smells like, it just smells expensive and it smells floral. And I don't know, I'm so bad at describing scents, but it is, it is just a beautiful, beautiful scent. And then I have got some lovely fluffy socks on as well. <laughs> Bobby had a bath yesterday, and Bobby had a little brush yesterday too. I need to finish brushing you though, because you take a while, you're so fluffy. It's very typically cloudy and dark outside today. And it's making me just want to be cozy. Isn't that right? I can't tell if these are dry, some of them are. We had to switch our agar off because um, our agar is run on oil. This is our agar. If you don't know what an agar is, it's just an old fashioned cooker, um, oven. And ours is an oil agar. We would love one day to switch it to electric, but we did look into that and it's just, I mean, it would cost so much money, I think. I think we did look at it and we were like, oh, can you do like an exchange of your agar? Um, <clears throat> and it was like more money to exchange your aga. Well, like, I think that the company we contacted offered us like 700 pounds or something for our, our aga. And I was like, that is insane because agas cost thousands. And to like re enamel it or change it to electric, you may as well buy a new one. And we were like, that is crazy. Also, it doesn't feel very sustainable. So it's maybe something in the long term we would do, but also like with the setup of our house, our house is run on oil because it's an old house. Um, yeah, long term, I would love to figure out ways to switch that, but it's just not budget friendly. When you buy a house as it is, you have to kind of, yeah. Anyway, that's a side note, but we had to switch off the Arga because we forgot to order oil and um, we've ordered it now, but it takes a bit of time and we didn't want the Arga because it like, 
it's burning on like a little flame essentially and if the oil goes too low it can't get to the agar because the way that the oil tank is outside it's like the slant is not big enough for it to reach the agar and then you can get bubbles caught and this is very boring but maybe interesting the me mechanics of an old house um that we have to yeah i've had to switch it off so the clothes are not dry <laughs> like they would usually be i need to figure out what i'm doing today i feel a little bit in a muddle i've got myself ready and i've said how great it helps and it does help but now i've got myself in a little bit of a muddle because i don't know what to do with myself today um so i i think i'm gonna write a list whenever i feel this way bobby is really after the attention right now do you know why it's because our window seat is above a radiator and she wants to be on the window seat all cozy and warm don't you this is our dog roxy if you're new to the channel it's our dog roxy we adopted her when she was a little girly i'll link the video look at these paws <laughs> um and she's a cocker spaniel and she's beautiful because we do have occasionally get, quest get questions on her um we adopted her from spaniel aid so if you are after a very cute doggy like this go check out spaniel aid because there are so many cute adorable doggies just like Bobby, who need a home. And I think lots of people when they see Roxy assume that we bought her brand new as a puppy, um, but you can adopt. There'll be a, if you have a dog in mind that you want to get, like a breed, there'll be charities that are rehoming dogs of that breed. So just look into it, research it. I always recommend that to people first because it's only been an incredible experience for us. Hasn't it, Roxy? She's happy now, she's on the radiator. Um, yeah, I, when I feel this way and I'm in a bit of a muddle, what I want to do with my day, I write a list. It's the way my brain works. And um, I always like to share that on the channel because I know some people have similar feelings and um, it's very integral to my channel, talking about my feelings and mental health and my thought processes and how I, how I challenge them or how I have certain tools to help them. So I always like to verbalize that because I, I know it can really help some of you and I use those tools from other people I follow. So yeah, I'm gonna write a list of the things that I would like to do. And this list is not a to-do list. This is a list of things I would like to do. And um, it can be leisure things as well or just doing things for the sake of doing them. Because I do also have a bad habit of making my days all about to-do lists, which is not always the right thing. You can you can have days and you're allowed days where you don't do anything and you enjoy that. So let's write a list of things that I want to do. Maybe there's a few to-dos in there, but maybe there's just stuff that's nice. Can you just put your head on me? There you go, girl. I've written my list on my phone. My life is on this notes app. Sunday, read my book, walk Roxy, bake something. These are just also optional. This is, I'm trying not to make this a list of things I have to do. It's just ideas of what I would like to do. Tidy the utility room, put the record player in the garage. This is a record player I got for Christmas. It's been sitting in my dressing room. And I just think it's indicative, is that the right word? Indicative of my situation that my word for the year was to slow down. And I have done that in lots of ways, but it's an example of how I've not prioritized hobbies and leisure time. And I've been prioritizing working and to-do lists and getting things done and being productive. It's a, it's a trait of mine that I think a lot of us share. It's symptomatic of the world we live in, capitalism, um, our working environments and the slow life, the, the cottage life, the countryside life. There is a sort of battle there and I want this life and I have this life, but there's still that battle within me as a millennial <laughs> to be productive and to get stuff done when actually you can still be productive and get stuff done whilst also having leisure and slow time in your life because that actually invigorates you and brings you back joy and happiness to then be able to tackle those things that you want to achieve. So anyway, bake something, tidy the utility room, which is a kind of to-do that was on my mind because it's messy in there. Put the record player in the garage, one hour in the garden, because I was thinking, I was like, none of these things take much time and I haven't been out in the garden. It's kind of coming to that time of year that we need to think about spring. So I could just go into the garden and I need to, um, basically our vegetable beds, I need to get anything out that uh, is salvageable and just start like mulching the compost a bit, like chopping all the, 
the weeds down and any vegetables. I think you can like chop the vegetables up if they're dead and put them back into the soil um, and have a bath. And that is my list of lovely things. So if you are feeling similar and you have a struggle with productivity versus slowing down, getting things done versus having leisure time and hobby time, maybe write a list of just nice things that you would like to do. And maybe there can be one or two things in there that are to-do listings, but try and make some of them just nice things, leisure things that you're doing just for the sake of the enjoyment of doing them. Um, there's a book I've been listening to called 4,000 Weeks, which I'm not joking, I think it's gonna change my entire life. And I would say to every single person watching this video, if you have money to buy a book, buy that book immediately buy it on Audible and listen to it on repeat. I am gonna to listen to it again once I finished it because it needs to be my life mantra. He goes into every single detail of basically 4,000 weeks is how much time the average person has on this planet. And he says that he used to be a productivity addict. You know, he would try and hack the system and think of all the different ways in which you could <clears throat> get more done. And I've been there, I've listened to all the self-help books to be more productive and to get better habits and he basically goes through different ideas and philosophies and worldviews and comes to the conclusion that that's not what life is about. And unfortunately, we've been pushed into this thinking that the more we do, the happier we be. The more money we have, the happier we will be. And it's just not true. And it's a vicious cycle because I think I was the example that I was just listening to was an example of food and microwaves. And he was saying that you know, a long time ago we would cook food and it would just take how long it took. And then the invention of microwaves meant that you could easily zap a meal in 60 seconds. And basically the cooking process and getting food got quicker and quicker and more and more convenient. And he says, at what point do we, at what point basically do we become impatient with that timing? Even though it's been reduced, we assume that it should be even quicker. Like when we're waiting for our microwave to finish, we probably hope that we could have you know, if, if it takes 60 seconds, why should it take 60 seconds? It should take no seconds. And he said, you know this from in an office, you probably go to use the microwave and the last person who's used it, it's on seven seconds because they were too impatient to wait for those last seven seconds for the food to be ready. And I've explained it in a very back, backwards way. I feel like that was not very eloquent. But essentially the idea is the more convenience we have in life, the more quick, productive, uh, fast things that we produce as humans and the more we develop with our technologies, the more removed we, we come from happiness and from enjoying our lives. So the convenience of that microwave food has removed the, the joy of cooking. Um, and we are just gonna continually become more and more impatient. And all of those solutions that we make as humans to make our lives more convenient and more easy actually get us further away from uh, the end goal, which I assume for most of us is to live a happy life, to be comfortable, to enjoy our day to day. And when we think, oh, this will free up time, it doesn't free up time. It actually just gives us another reason to fill our time. And it is a trap. It's a trap of capitalism um, because it just traps us in this vicious cycle of constantly wanting to do more, 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 more. And I really recommend this book. It has changed my life already. I already know these things. They're already innate with me, within me. You probably know this from my channel. Like, I'm obviously sharing a slow life in the countryside in Cornwall, trying to impl like put these things in my day to day. And it's like, I've, I've got to that stage where I've made my life this way, but I'm not thinking this way in my head. I'm still battling with it. I still, ha I have a slow life. I live in the countryside. I have all these wonderful things, but I'm still fighting in my own head about it. When I'm on a walk, I'm thinking I should get home and get on. When I'm reading a book, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I can't concentrate. Because he, he used the example of reading as well. Like reading a book is such a good example of a, of a task that you cannot speed up. When you're reading a book, you're reading a book. You read as fast as you read. And that's why it's such a mindful practice because when you're doing something else, there's a way to speed it up. There's a way to keep going or do something else or be distracted. You know, on TikTok, it's just quick, 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 swipe, swipe, swipe. And um, yeah, the second I finish that book, I'm listening to it all over again because it is probably the most profound book I've ever read. And maybe it's just profound to me at this moment because that's what I need in my life. And I need to learn to be more content and slow down and realize that anything else I could gain in life isn't worth the extra convenience. 
all the extra hard work, to be honest with you. So maybe I can hold myself accountable on this channel by sharing more slow Sundays with you where I do nice things and you can do them with me. And I really, I just had a moment then actually when I was sitting writing the list and I was thinking, do you know what? I don't actually have this hobby that I'm thinking of in my mind. I thought oh, maybe we could sit down and paint. And I was like, everything that I do in life is is to be productive or to get something done. Like even filming, like it's like, oh, I should do this because it would make a good video. And I was like, I don't have something right now in my life that is just for the sake of it. I don't. Like even reading, I'm like, oh, I need to read more. Like that's something I have to do. I should have a goal of reading more. <sighs> We've got ourselves in a sorry state as a, as a country, as a planet, haven't we? Anyway, I'm gonna, work my way through my list of things that's hopefully gonna get me out of this rut, of always trying to be productive. None of these things are about productivity, they're about enjoyment. In fact, maybe the utility room should wait because that is about productivity. Um, so what do I wanna do first? I wanna put the record player next door because then I can maybe um, have lunch and go in there after lunch and, oh, what time is it? Well, at some point today, I think that it would be nice if I actually played the record player and maybe read that would be quite nice or just sat there and listened to music because it's enjoyable. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. I'm actually gonna look and see what I could bake because that's so relaxing and I could put on Nora Jones and bake something. So I'm gonna have a little rummage in the cupboard. So this is my baking drawer. So we've definitely got flour. We've got Biscoff spread. So I could make brownies again. We've got lots of chocolate spread. But do you know what I really fancy? Like a lemon cake. I have a recipe for a lemon olive oil cake and I'm gonna see if I've got those ingredients. It's whether I have enough olive oil. I know I've got loads of lemons, so let me just look that up. So actually I've just realized the ingredients are really simple and you only need one lemon. I had it in my head that you needed loads of olive oil and loads of lemons, you don't. I'll link the short, but you need 225 grams of caster sugar, 250 grams of plain flour. Alexa, stop. Okay. So you need, um, yeah, one teaspoon of bicarb, of soda, 100 ml of olive oil, 240 ml of non-dairy milk, zest and juice of one lemon, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, three quarters of a cup of fresh or frozen raspberries and some icing sugar on top. I do have some frozen berries. Let me just check if it's raspberries. What do we have? I've got fro frozen blueberries, so that'll be an interesting change. I obviously, I don't want it to end up um, making the cake go a funny color, but I don't think it should because the berries will float to the bottom, but very basic. I'm just gonna whack it together now because that would be such a treat this afternoon. Got our mixture in our tray. I did put the blueberries in there. We may end up with a blue cake. I've never tried it with frozen blueberries before. We'll see. I'm sure it will still taste delicious. They probably will sink to the bottom. Um, I know that there is a hack for that. I did. Someone did comment that somewhere where you coat the the raspberries or blueberries in flour, maybe or something like that, so it can stay sitting because they do kind of sink. But it's literally just you know, us at home having this, so it doesn't, I'm not worried. Um, but let's put this in the oven. You cook it for quite a while, about 45 minutes. Yeah, so I'll give it another minute, just still heating up. 
and that was rapid so if you want a really quick easy cake then this is the one to make and then you just sprinkle over icing sugar at the end and it is delicious and what I really love about it is that it is made with olive oil over a margarine, which I use this and there's nothing wrong with it. However, if you're vegan and you're making switches, sometimes it can end up that you're making switches into things like margarines or um, processed foods aren't the best. So it's quite nice to have a different option um, with olive oil, which is so, so good for you. And in 2024, one of my things was to focus on I guess reducing some of the ultra processed food in my diet it's not that i'm saying that there's any strict rules because i think that that's actually dangerous more so i guess thinking about adding to my diet more whole foods and um just being mindful of it there's no nothing in me that says i can't have those things i enjoy them a lot but it's being more mindful of it and conscious of it and stuff like this is lovely because you can make your own cake at home from ingredients in the cupboard obviously i mean oat milk's an ultra processed food so i'm not being particular about it yeah i've got sugar in there at least that's a whole food <laughs> but you get the gist um so yeah i'm gonna wait for this to heat up and then oh it's it's hot now so yeah i'm gonna put this in for 45 minutes ta-da So we managed to harvest quite a lot of pak choy from the garden. There was loads that I forgot that was there, so that's amazing. And um, I had to rinse it so thoroughly because there were so many slugs. And it's really scared me because this meal may not be vegan because just as I was cooking, I saw a slug on the chopping board. And I, that was after me washing them. Like I like soaked them for 10 minutes, rinsed them like three, four, five times, got rid of all the slugs, put them, I put them in the compost bin. I'm gonna take them outside because um, I hate the idea of them dying and going down the drain so they're just sitting on top of the pak choy there um, and there was another one on the chopping board so now I'm paranoid but surely that would have been the last one and I'm just going to be careful with my bites but basically I've just whipped together a very quick like miso soup um, I had some miso in the fridge I had the pak choy I had some udon noodles that are like quick cook ones and I've got kimchi and I've thrown in loads of pak choy and a bit of soy sauce and a vegetable stock cube, which it's not traditional, not a, oh yeah, and a block of silken tofu. And also I had some nori sheets, and this is gonna be a very delicious lunch because it's instant and you can make it from scratch very quickly and easily. And it's so good for you because miso is fermented, as is kimchi. If you have kimchi on the side, I always have kimchi or sauerkraut in the fridge. So good for your stomach. My next goal is to start making my own kimchi because I love it so much. And um, that's another like mindful practice. like. Annoyingly, I've made my hobby my career. However, that doesn't mean that I can't really spend the time to enrich my hobby of cooking and baking and enjoying that process by myself and then relay the information. So I'm gonna start to learn how to make my own kimchi and then I can share how I've done it. There's plenty of tutorials. I know that Cheap Lazy Vegan has one, so I'm probably gonna follow hers, but the issue I suppose is getting some of the ingredients, but I'm pretty sure that my local Asian supermarket will have them um, and if not I could order because I know that there's a chili paste that goes in it that I just need to look out for so let me know if you've got any tips though this one is the Newlin fermentary the Newlin firm fermentary red kimchi and Newlin is in Penzance which is local so that's great um, but yeah once this is just the noodles are cooked I'm gonna have all of this soup and I'm very excited
Now that is a very full bowl of so soup and it's steaming up the camera and it's gone everywhere but um, I'm so excited to dig in and I love the fact that the veg is from the garden. We should all learn from our pets when it comes to relaxing because Roxy surely knows how to have leisure and downtime in her day, don't you Bob? Sometimes I look at her and I think, oh, I'm, oh my gosh, look at her tongue. That's really a happy puppy. Sometimes I look at her and think, wow, I'm so jealous. I wish I could be a dog. And then like, I don't know, maybe I should like look at her more and think, maybe I should be more like her. Maybe I should be more like a dog. Maybe I should lounge like this doing nothing. They truly know how to live their best life, don't they? To relax and to just enjoy. Good girl, look at that eye. Your droopy head. She's so soft because I washed her. Look how fluffy she is. Oh my God. Freeze me next to Ted Williams. And when they find the cure to what I died of and they unfreeze me, my first words are going to be... They do that? According to Charleston, it's done all the time. Wow. Yeah, it would be an opportunity. Okay, just as I, was as I was digging into my soup, the timer has gone off. So let's take a look. Oh, it smells amazing. Ooh. So I'm gonna test it by putting a little knife or chopstick in there. I'm gonna go with a knife because I don't think I have a looks pretty good to me. I feel like that looks done because it looks lovely and golden. So I'm just going to leave it to cool in the tin for 10 minutes and then put it onto a cooling rack and we can enjoy it. But boy, I forgot how unbelievably delicious that this smells. And you can see the blueberry. My only fear is that because they were frozen, that they will have sunk and they're gonna make it stick to the bottom. But if it happens, it happens and I can still enjoy it. It'll still taste delicious. I'm, but we'll see, I don't know. It might be totally fine and I might be just panicking for no reason because I'm trying something different, but it smells amazing first and foremost. Oh, it's hot. <clears throat> so this one definitely hasn't risen as much. And I think it's because of the, the moisture of the blueberries, but that's okay. Delicious. Look at that color as well. It's kind of gone green because of think of the the olive oil and the blueberries. It's gonna be very difficult not to just eat this whole cake by myself. But here it is, let's have a bite. Yeah, it's gone very green in color, I think because of the blueberries. Oh my gosh, that's really delicious. Definitely think it works better with fresh raspberries over frozen blueberries because frozen fruits always hold a bit more water, so it can be done. And also blueberries, I just feel like they're more watery than raspberries. Tastes so good. I'm gonna have a cup of tea with this, or maybe a coffee. Yeah, I'm gonna have a cup of coffee and enjoy this and continue watching Gilmore Girls because it's Sunday. I don't think I showed you this, but we got a new runner. The floor is dirty, so just ignore that. I need to mop, um, but Roxy is modeling it beautifully. This I got on Facebook Marketplace for 75 pounds, which I could not believe. This is real wool. Where's the label? I wonder if it's got any information on the label. There we go. So it is, um, that doesn't really say anything, does it? but it's wool and um, Roxy loves it. And the reason we got it is because so many runners that I found were just completely red, which I love. I do love runners like that. 
but I was concerned about it being a bit of a funny contrast to our blue walls. So I saw this and it's got the navy and it's got the blues and the beige and the reds. And I thought what a beautiful compliment to the walls. I also didn't want the floors to be too dark because we've already got a dark floor and then red rug. So I think this is a great option and it really works well with this rug in here. This one was also on Facebook. If you are in Cornwall, I will link the seller. She's called Sharon Whiskers on Facebook. So she does sell a lot of stuff like this in Cornwall. She has loads of rugs. So if you're interested, cause I do get questions on this, but I feel like it just flows really nicely. This hall is still a work in progress. We haven't finished it. We need to do the skirtings and the doors and do lots of painting and do these cupboards and stuff. And it's kind of an in-between stage at the minute, but that's okay. Roxy clearly wants to go outside. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to paint the doors and all that kind of stuff. So we, we will get to it, won't we, Bob? We will. I'm getting changed because I'm gonna go for a walk. I've been inside for a while. The day has disappeared. I kind of got stuck on the sofa feeling sad. So I'm gonna go out. I'm undecided now because it's like I love Pen this place called Penrose near us is such a wonderful walk and um, it's really good because I can just walk straight for ages and not worry about Roxy. Oh, she can hear me say the W word but I have to drive there. There's also a dolphin but the fields I would worry about her a little bit there and then I could walk around here but she'd have to stay on the lead. No I think I'm just gonna walk around here like that's fine for her to be on the lead and I can just do a big loop because then I can switch off properly. You're a little naughty one, so let's go out. Okay, I'm back from my walk and I'm gonna have a bath this evening and wash my hair. I'm gonna take it out and put some oil in it, which I've shown you so many times. I don't do this every time I wash my hair, but I do try and do it most times. And I think I shared it in my last vlog in detail, so I'll link that one. Um, but I try and do like a scalp massage um, and brush it out with a bamboo hairbrush. Is that all the clips? Yeah, my hair actually only had like three, four clips in it, which is quite good. Oh, there's another one, I can feel it. No, that was only three clips, I think. Very comfy. So, the Miel oil, I'm gonna brush my hair first. I have to do this quickly because I just put my pasta on to cook and I have a feeling I've put it at the highest temperature and it's probably gonna be boiling in a second. So I always do the roots and then brush from the bottom upwards because you don't want to be ripping any hair out. If you have wavy hair then or curly hair, then your hair will be tangled because it's not straight and so it will have tangles further up. Luckily, I do have fine hair, so my hair doesn't actually get that tangled. You see, that is really not, it's already pretty, yeah, pretty much done. So one benefit. Oh, it feels so good as well. So when you're using your wooden bamboo hairbrush, I'd really recommend you get one 
It's actually something I've done since the no poo days, if you followed me since then. It is like, it works. If you want to stretch out the days between your hair washes, if you want to nourish your scalp, use a bamboo hairbrush. Because what it does is it's going to stimulate your scalp and exfoliate it. If you think about all the stuff you use in your skin on your face to exfoliate your skin, there, your scalp is similar. And if anything, your scalp is getting so much more product more regularly. Hello, Bobby. Like, it's not getting exfoliated because it's just sitting there on your head. It's not getting washed. Well, some people wash their hair every day. Yeah, it produces a lot more oil, so it's really good to distribute it. And it nourishes the rest of your hair. So as you're bringing it down, it's spreading out that oil. And I actually used to find one of the processes of when you do no poo, which is no shampoo, which is where you use either no shampoo or like I did, you use like natural alternatives and you try and space out the days of washing. What it does is you, I would do this in the evening, I'd wake up and my hair would be less greasy. So if you struggle with grease, it can help to distribute it. And then using a scalp massager, Just go over your whole head and this feels so nice. It feels so, so, like such a good massage. And I will do this in the bath as well once I've got the oil in there. But usually I try and do this overnight, but I didn't do this last night, I forgot. So that's okay. But I'm gonna, you can feel my head feels so warm now. I'm gonna pop a few pipettes. I usually do about two. I don't like to overdo it. Maybe one more at the back. And I like to focus on the hairline. And then I'm just gonna massage it in, which is also great for your scalp and hair growth, because it's gonna encourage your follicles. And then I'm just gonna put it in a plait or something. Might just put it in a bun. No, I'll just put it in a bun. And then we will have a bath and wash our hair. And before I wash my hair, you can put this oil on the lengths of your hair for 10 minutes. I will do that when I first get in the bath because I don't think it's good to leave it on the ends of your hair for too long. I'm not sure why, but I always try and actually follow the instructions on hair products. I don't remember who said that, but somebody said that years ago and I really remember that advice. They were like, people complain about hair products not doing what they want them to do and it's because they don't follow the instructions. He's like, like hair masks are not meant to be left on overnight. So that's gonna actually damage your hair. And this specifically says to leave it on the ends for 10 minutes so there will be a reason for that so we're gonna slick it back you know what it doesn't even make your hair look greasy like i could totally just it looks like my hair is just clean and styled you could totally do this on a random day and it just means you've got nice slicked hair which i often do i'm gonna run downstairs and hope that the pasta hasn't boiled over but like how quick is that because i've brushed my hair it makes it really smooth. Oh God, I knew it. That's okay. I'm using this pasta from Holland and Barrett. They sent me like a Veganuary package. And I think that they basically introduced some new products where you can buy things like red lentil fusilli. They had pasta sauces, just like your everyday things that are vegan and organic. Um, this cooks really fast, so it says three minutes. So I actually think this is probably done and I'm gonna put pesto and sun-dried tomatoes in there. So this is actually fantastic. They had a um, pasta sauce I used the other day that was delicious. So if you like need like a quick meal that you know is gonna be really healthy, I'm pretty sure the base of that um, pasta was vegan cream cheese and tomato. And then this is high protein. It's like an instant meal, which means you're getting some goodness. And so even though I am a recipe content creator, I still have these kinds of meals regularly. Everyone does. I've got sun-dried tomatoes. So, in fact, I'm gonna chop these up first. And I'll drizzle a bit of this olive oil. The oil from those jars of sun-dried tomatoes is so delicious, it adds so much flavor. Salt, and I've got the Violife Vegan Parmesan. I always have in the fridge. It lasts ages, just like Parmesan, because um, a little goes a long way. And it means that every time you have pasta, you've got delicious Parmesan for it. It does smell strong, I will say that. 
but it doesn't it doesn't taste the way it smells like it smells quite intense but delicious so there is my delicious really um really interesting dinner <laughs> Voila! Dinner was delicious for such a rapid dinner. And now I'm gonna run the bath. Let's move Roxy's harness. I hung this here because she had a bath yesterday and I washed this as well. It's nice and dry. So I'm gonna run the bath and I'm gonna use... See, I always forget whether these are bubble bars. That looks like a bubble bar. Let's try it. Is this a bubble bar or a bath bomb? Looks like a bubble bath, little rose one from Lush. I'm going to use that, run a bath, and wash my hair. And also, going to use this face, tired face mask, because that's how I feel and finish this Grace Cole scrub. Scrub my whole body. Do my hair. I'm also going to put in some bath oil from Kiss the Moon. Thinking of what I said earlier about leisure and hobbies for the sake of hobbies, doing things for the sake of doing them, not being productive. I feel like TikTok was listening to me because this video popped up and she talked about this exact thing and there was a book called Do Nothing that she recommended. So I really want to download that book now and maybe read that in between going back and rereading 4,000 weeks and I'll get back to you on what I think. But apparently it's about kind of post-industrial revolution, about how when it comes to productivity, it's just this, it's the same thing, it's this endless cycle of productivity and how your body like adjusts, your brain adjusts when um, you get more money, for example, uh, you, you're, you're the only human, humans are the only animal that is never satisfied and they always want more because I think she, the quote was something along the lines of humans are the only animals who, when they're hungry or when they're fed, remain hungry. So when, if, if you won the lottery, there's so much um, evidence for the fact that people who win the lottery end up miserable and um, their lives no happier because you adjust to whatever situation you're in. So if you gain loads of money, you, um, that becomes your new normal and then you want more. And it could be the same for other situations. Maybe there's a relationship you've always wanted or a job you've always wanted or um, a way of life that you've always dreamed of. When you reach that point, you just adjust and you still want more and you still want to achieve something else. And it's just symptomatic of the world we live in and also our human nature. And she spoke about leisure and how we've forgotten yeah, that kind of experience of just having leisure for the sake of leisure, being lazy, just doing nothing and enjoying that process. And that's just, I just think that the more that this year goes on, and we're in February now, my word of the year was slow. And I think it was that, that came to me for a reason because I do need this in my life. I need to have hobbies and leisure and baths are a good example of that. There is no goal when it comes to having a bath. I mean, apart from getting clean, I guess you could call it productive in that sense. <laughs> but I could have a shower, you know? So I'm having a bath so that I can relax and it's so enjoyable for me. I'm lying there, I'm doing nothing. It's the ultimate form of being lazy. You're lying there in your own bodily <laughs> whatever. And you're, you know, I'll read a book, I'll watch a reality TV show. I'll scrub myself, I'll wash my hair. Like it is a lazy, leisurely, beautiful activity. And it's what we used to do. You know, you think of Ro ancient Roman Greece, that's what they did. They, they just soaked in baths and steam rooms and saunas and just, that was, that was the epitome of, that was like, that was the, the highest regard. He said this in 4,000 weeks that um, there's certain words like ancient Greek or Rome, um, ancient Greek words or Latin words that I, I cannot misquote this because I don't know Greek or Latin. Alex should tell me what it is actually. But um, the, the word for leisure or being lazy or doing nothing was the epitome of 
I guess human nature like it was it wasn't being busy and being successful success was seen as being leisurely so the more leisurely you were the more higher you were up in society essentially obviously that comes with the element of the people who were able to be leisurely were probably very wealthy and weren't servants or slaves they had the time and money to just do what they wanted to do but I think that philosophically the point was that in terms of like spiritually and philosophically they believed that humans were designed <laughs> to ultimately do nothing and relax um, and when I say do nothing I mean do things but there's no end goal so walking uh, hobbies relaxing enjoying relationships you know those kinds of things and I'm really rambling now and I really rambled earlier on so I really don't want to go on about it but I guess it sets the theme for this video that work is important getting things done is important productivity is important but we shouldn't fall fall for the trap that is the world we live in and forget to live our lives and to forget to just enjoy what we're doing and enjoy the beauty of life which is having a bath going for a walk spending time with friends with no awareness of the clock you know just doing things because you enjoy them do not forget to do that in your life and don't feel guilty don't get into the trap that I've fallen into when I when I lie down and I watch TV or I do something that I you know I, I sit there feeling guilty about all the things I should be doing all the to-do lists I should be ticking off when that is literally what life is for um, so I think I need to be firm with myself and make sure that there's a day a week where I'm literally doing nothing there is no to do this there's no goal I just do what I want to do and that's it and in my day-to-day -day, try and have something every day that I'm doing that requires no productivity it's just for the sake of it and let me know if you're going to try out the same let me know if this has been interesting because it's I guess I hesitate to share these thoughts with you because I get, I get worried I'm just talking too much and it's boring but I don't know, I enjoy it when other people vlog and share their thoughts like this and, and, and say what they've been reading and what they've been absorbing and their reflections in this way because I'm just having a chat like I would with a friend. So let me know if you've resonated and I'm going to have this bath with no, no goal apart from getting clean <laughs> and I'm going to soak it up and I absolutely love a bath and every day this week I endeavour and I will report back in the next vlog, every day this week I will endeavour to do leisurely things for the sake of their enjoyment whatever that may be and I have been doing actually one thing I have been doing is I've been singing at home you know I'm not a good singer I'm not somebody who does it professionally of course I'm never going to be posting singing videos <laughs> of me doing stuff on the internet but that is exactly the point I have been sitting in the kitchen listening to my favorite songs and singing along just because it's fun there's no end goal I don't ever intend on becoming a singer I don't ever intend on monetizing that hobby, it's just fun. And I would like to get singing lessons, and I've said this to you, and I've never done it because I view it as not a productive thing to do because it has nothing to do with anything. And I'm gonna keep doing that, I'm gonna keep singing, um, and maybe I need to do some more artistic things because I, I think about my childhood and I think about things I loved to do as a child, and that was singing, dancing, playing music, playing the piano, sports and you know we had so many hobbies as children things like painting and drawing and nobody judged you you know you had to I guess you had classes you had to achieve a certain grade but you know you draw something and you think oh that was really fun to do and I just want to do more of that in my life I want to just have that yeah have that childlike mentality maybe I need to go into the attic and get out my art supplies because I'm pretty sure they're up there and just start doing things more that bring me joy. Let me know if you're gonna do the same. Or if there is a hobby that you have started that is just a hobby for the sake of enjoyment, please let me know in the comments down below. Um, I would love to hear it because it's escaped me for too long. Um, even things like going to the gym and exercise, I don't treat it as a hobby, I treat it as like, this is good for me. So yeah, I'm gonna end the vlog here, have my bath, and I will see you in the next one. This is a very chatty vlog. But I hope you enjoyed it and hit the subscribe button and thumbs up. Let's start a conversation in the comments and I will report back. I will be reporting back on this, this process this year. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. So I will see you in the next one.